Hey boys and girls, it's Night Stalker here. Welcome along today to my book guide and build guide for Longsword. Check it, check it out, man. So I've been playing Longsword for a little while now. Uh, just a hot minute, game or two, a few thousand game or twos. And um, the, the class has changed a lot recently. So the first thing I want to preface with is that there are more than one way to play Longsword now. And if anything I'm saying that you want to add to, or you think it's wrong, just plain wrong, or you want to um, tell other people about how you do your build, this video is for new people or people who are just picking up the Longsword class. So add your own thoughts in the comments below. You can even tell me I'm outright wrong if you want, as long as you're respectful doing it. That's the key thing. So um, without further ado, let's have a look at the Longsword class. What is the Longsword class all about? So, the Longsword class is chiefly about soaking up as much damage from the enemy as you can, while at the same time healing and buffing units around you. Now, there are more than one way to play a Longsword class, but the way that I play it heavily leans into its preferences, heavily leans into its strengths. And I'll tell you a little bit about how you can do this. So being a, an absolute meat tank is, is the number one way to play this class. You can go a full damage longsword if you want. It is possible these days. But if you're going to go full damage longsword, which is, you know, probably half agility, half strength, uh, you've got to realize that you are still the lowest damage hero in the game, even if you don't go full damage. However, you're a quite a bit tougher than your average other damage class. Uh, it's not really the way to play the longsword, but you absolutely can do it. And I'll talk to you about how these three as we go through, which is why I'm defining them now. There's the, the mid-range guy. So the guy who wants to put, say, half into toughness, uh, sorry, and yeah, probably, probably half into armor and half into strength. And that's probably uh, a really good flexible longsword. You've got enough damage to clear chaff if you're using the right skills. Chaff are light enemy units. Um, and you've got still enough toughness to really take a beating. But the, the strongest way to play the longsword is, in my opinion, dump it all into toughness and armor. In my instance, you can see here, uh, over on the left-hand side, I've gone full into toughness, which is like the old-school way of playing longsword. Um, ever since the, the change to the healing skill, which doesn't stack off a multiple of your, of your hit points anymore, um, you can still get... A lot out of this class by playing for toughness but um, armor is also good and we'll talk about that uh, well, we'll let's talk about it now shall we okay so here we go here are my general attributes I have 43,000 hit points yes I do um, and that is pretty much the only thing I worry about on this top line stamina is useful because you tend to spend a lot of time on foot rather than on horse when you're playing a longsword uh, Critical hit chances are relevant for this class, uh, damage rate is irrelevant for this class, and the resistance is also relevant for this class because of the, well, it depends what type of longsword you're playing. If you're playing a full, you know, meat tank version of the, the class, it really doesn't matter. You can take those criticals and just suck them up. But um, it's not something I would go for on any of the three types of build that you could go with for this class. I wouldn't even worry about it at all. It's not stackable to the point where it matters. So, um... Ideally, uh, when you're playing the full meat version of this uh, this uh, longsword class, don't worry too much about your attack attributes. You're going to do enough damage to to at least matter in the game. Um, I would average somewhere between just with the longsword itself, just with the hero, 150 to 250 thousand damage in a game, kind of on average. I mean, I, I put my results on <laughs> online a lot so you're welcome to go and look at all my videos at the end of the video um, I always show the stats for the game so you'll be able to have a look there now defense attributes is where it's really at if you're going to lean into this class properly now it has been extensively tested by um, the the CB analyst crew and the tipping point for armor where toughness becomes better is 850 at that point once you get to 850 armor you've got diminishing returns, right? However, toughness doesn't have diminishing returns ever because one hit point is one hit point, whether you've got 40,000 hit points or 20,000 hit points. You still take 1,000 damage from a sword swing, it still comes off that total. So there's no dimin diminishing returns on toughness, which is part of the reason that I love it so much. So with that in mind, that's the key thing I want you to take away from this, is that once you get to 850 
defense attribute, you start getting diminishing returns. So if you're particularly if you're new to the class um, or new to the game especially, you need to remember that tipping point because I would put skills into armor all the way up until you've got 850 and then dump the rest into toughness. You're not going to have in-game armor like mine. <laughs> you know, it's just a little bit over the top to consider that. So in-game armor for um, for longsword. What should you be going for primarily? Primarily, it needs to be reforged. And I won't tell you how to do that in this video. There's plenty of videos around that tell you how to do that. But you need to get reforged guardsman armor. So not only do you need to craft player armor, you need, need to reforge the player uh, the player armor because that greatly increases the base dam uh, sorry base defense of each individual item. So see how it's got piercing defense 108, slashing defense 108, blunt defense 108. If it wasn't re uh, reforged, you're probably 20 or 30 less than that, just at a blind guess. The mechanic's quite new and I don't really notice stuff like that when I upgrade. Um, the other stats that you should be looking for on this um, on these armor pieces if you're leaning into the full full meat tank, is first of all is leadership. Leadership is always best. So I'm crafting my player armor, looking for high leadership scores, and then I'm locking in that leadership score and re-rolling it on reforged. And what I'm looking for on the reforged is health. Or toughness. Toughness also works. Ten toughness is a thousand health, right? But I'm looking for leadership as the primary stat and health as the secondary stat. Um, and if you can make them gold, that's nice as well because they get a higher base. Uh, you know, damage defense. So here again, we've got um, over 20 leadership and we've got 1200 health. We've got over 20 leadership, we've got an extra 1000 health. We've got over 20 leadership, we've got over 1000 health. And let's see the strength plus 6 and tough, uh, toughness plus 10 at the bottom, that's key. However, for the, the, the sword is something I do differently. I will also always go for slashing armor penetration first. <laughs> it's the primary stat, as weird as that sounds. Um, and that's because it helps get you to that tipping point of, ideally you want to be at 1600 um, slashing armor penetration. It, especially if you want to go more damage focused, that, that's the tipping point there. Again, CB Analyst, great crew. Go see Alan Apogee and uh, all of those guys. They know what they're talking about because they extensively test this stuff. Like they spend hours, it's nuts. You guys are crazy. I couldn't I couldn't bear it. But slashing armor penetration is is my key stat for my longsword. After that, I just want whatever makes sense. You know, slashing armor uh, slashing damage would be fine, um, which you've got there when you do strength. Strength will give you slashing damage. Um, and of, of course, I was lucky enough to also get some toughness on the roll of 10, which is another 1000 hit points. And here we are at 43,000 hit points. If you're going to go the midway through, um you know, halfway between damage and and tough and and um, meat tank you might want to scale that differently. You might want to look more at, um, at, at damage stats, particularly for your weapon. But uh, I'm happy with strength, toughness, and 256 slashing armor penetration. Um, on the midway between the two, it would be the same here. You would still want the health um, and the leadership. If you're going to go full damage and be that crazy guy, um, you would definitely want slashing armor penetration and slashing, armor, uh, slashing damage on this. Um, you would want... You're going to be severely deficient in your in your defenses uh, if you go that way. So you want to obviously leadership is always first. Um, a bit of health and a bit of armor is not uh, is going to help you particularly if you're going to try and um, build for that. But if you're going to play this game long term and you're a new player, especially if you're going to play this class long term, I would heavily suggest you go into the the armor toughness um, type builds. It's definitely the best. They, these allow you to spend more time microing your troops while people are hitting you. It allows you to open the battles um, with your face, <laughs> so people will dump all of their skills on you. They might do twenty thousand damage to you, but you back down. You only down to half hit points when you take twenty thousand damage. Okay, it's crazy. Um, and then of course you heal, and you get about. 30 to 40 percent of your hit points back per heal. I don't even run a bandage on my build at all. I run um, a poison build, so I can't bandage. The only way I can heal with my build is to um, hit the arc here and use Mercy of Heaven. So that's something you might want to do as a more advanced player. Um, that's kind of where I'm at with how I've built this class. Leadership first, health second. Always reforged everything, and uh, slashing armor penetration is a primary on my sword. Um, everything else was just really nice to, to lo lock onto the roll, you know. You can get better swords than this. Um, I tend to spend most of my reforging on my armor. 
it's just more important to this build. Again, 850 minimum, and then dump everything else into health. What sort of runes am I using? Now, don't forget that um, between seasons, uh, uh, the runes change, okay? So I'm going to talk to you about the kinds of runes that I'm using. Uh, regenerate 70 health every second. Now, a lot of people do not like this rune. The alternatives, of course, are... Where are we here? You know, let's look at the alternatives. Um, damage increased, not interested in that at all. Not interested in damage increases for, for the way that I play this class. Not in the slightest. Um, and you can get the base stats up, the strength and toughness, ability, agility and resistance. Anytime you're increasing your base stats uh, with runes as a longsword, you, you're fine. Okay. If you don't know what to pick, increase your base stats. And again, if you're leaning into the, the damage, go damage stats. If you're leaning into the, the, the meat tank, take meat tank. You know, you want... Uh, resilience and toughness if you're a tank you want agility and strength if you're trying to do damage again I want to stress that if you're a full damage longsword you are still the lowest damage hero in the in, in the match okay it's just something you might want to play for fun but uh, certainly the best of this class is either a mix between damage and toughness uh, you know damage and resilience um, or, or just plain out resilience toughness mm. all right so this skill has, but this one here has been around a while, okay? And this is a mandatory skill. Anything that allows you to do burst buffs, so you're using your Mercy in Heaven, uh, a Mercy of Heaven and Nightly Vows constantly anyway, um, everyone around you gets 6% damage resistance for 8 seconds. And it's a 20 second cycle, so 16 out of 20 seconds, you're, everyone around you has a damage reduction. It's mental, it's amazing, it's just lovely. Any version of this, that allows you to buff people around you uh, on your base skills, this is the type of rune you want. Um, so given the alternatives, that's why I've gone with Endless Vitality. Uh, simply, it, it's just better than the alternatives. Um, again, because I'm not running a bandage, I don't have the ability to bandage on my character. You know, don't do that if you're, if you're new to the class. But um, this keeps me, especially when I'm sitting on artillery and you've got like a bow shooting at your head, they do like a, a thousand or 1600 per hit and it just helps keep you above and it, it can be quite demoral, demoralizing for like a short bow especially to be pounding you in the head and doing 300 damage and every tick that they're firing, you know, you get two ticks between, you get 140 back. So they're doing half damage essentially. Um, I do like the skill, particularly because I'm not running a bandage. So uh, let's talk about the helmet. So our options here are, so toughness increased by 5, you always want this, this rune if you're building um, for toughness, and again strength and toughness, lovely. This rune is quite good, anything that re reduces the damage that you take, okay, again these, these runes change between seasons, so we'll talk about the kind of runes that you want, anything that has damage reduction is great. Um, one of the, the roles of the longsword is to, to hold the point as long as possible while your team either reinforce or they... Uh, respawn and get back in the battle. So this is the one I take, uh, particularly for my playstyle, which if you're watching my videos, uh, you'll see it. Um, while in a flag area, um, you take uh, damage reduced by 12%. That's massive. That's massive when you've got a 43,000, you know, health pool. That adds another what four, five thousand damage to your to your total um, before you die. Um, also, healing is slightly based on. Um, on toughness as well uh, and has a damage resistance we'll talk about that soon all right i won't complicate it at this point recover two percent health every second while the supply point is useless anything that that's situational like that you just don't want uh, let's talk about then uh, our reforged guardsman body armor damage reduction is amazing you want damage reduction anytime you can get it um this one is also a very good one this season. The uh, damage taken reduced by 2% because it stacks, right? All of these damage reductions stack. So I could take that one as well. That would be really nice um, instead of this one, for example, but I don't have the the, the rune power. Uh, reducing full damage by 50% is great as well because you can harass at the start of the game and then just jump on, off the wall when you're getting low. This one is actually really good for longsword. Anything that increases stamina is great. It's just too expensive for what it is. Um, extra stamina is 100 because the, the way that you defend points and things is that you run or you roll and those things consume stamina so um, 
this is really good for a longsword, but it's just too expensive. If it was one energy, I'd take it, guaranteed. Damage reduction, great. Resilience, great. That's extra armor, by the way. Resilience is armor. Um, uh, damage taken from units by 7%, lovely. So, especially, you know, if it's a shield of Shinji's, unit you know, of Shinji's is now doing minus 14% damage to you. On top of all your other damage resistance as well, don't forget. Base stats, always good for a longsword. Boots. Now here we, here we go. This is where it gets a little bit contentious. Um, bandage no longer heals, but instead makes your attacks within 15 seconds apply poison. I really like this because I virtually never use my bandage anyway. Um, it takes you out of the fight for too long when you really need to be on the front line soaking up damage. You know, when the when the, each individual fight starts, you want to be the one where the enemy heroes use their ults to open or they use skills to open the, the battle. You want all of those skills and ults and things to hit you personally, not any troops and not your buddies. Um, so, where was I going with that? I forget. Anyway, I don't use a bandage. Um, I need to be on the front line. That's what I was saying, being on the front line. So, this is really good. Um, it takes a little bit to train your brain to remember to use it, but once you do, it actually considerably increases your amount of damage and you get some weird kills with it too when people get low and they run away um, they, their bleed ticks continue and murders them it's great um, bandages you don't want anything that enhances your bandage as a longsword because you can already heal without a bandage all right forget anything with a bandage just you don't need it um, don't use damage um, increases or uh, armor penetration increases as a longsword unless you're going into that uh, that realm of i'm trying to be a damage longsword um, agility, this would be quite nice for, for uh, you know, any sort of damage build because it will increase your penetration. And again, base, base stats are always good for longsword. If, you, if in doubt, base stats are great. And as you can see, for my, um, my Reforged Guardsman braces, I've gone all base stats. Um, because I don't want a 2% damage increase, you know, strength increased by 2 is better. <laughs> it does more damage. Do the maths. Um, anything that includes killing a hero, you don't want to do that because you don't kill many heroes with your longsword itself. You kill heroes using your units. Um, anything, again, increases your damage, unless you're leaning into that really weird build of, of trying to be a damage longsword, you don't really want to, to, to mess with those. So the decision for me was obvious, just increasing my base stats. So that's fun. That's fun. Um, let's talk about the skills then for the longsword. Um, I would usually use uh, this one. So, out of the two ultimates, here's the, here's the deal. Clash of Shields, if you practice and practice and practice, you can use it to stop cavalry charges, particularly if you've got very high amount of hit points and they shoot you with their cavalry guns or hit you with their cavalry lances. You don't die. And it into, it stuns and interrupts entire cavalry charges if you practice with it. Infantry too, infantry are less dangerous, um, but the infantry charges can be messed with with that as well. Especially things like I don't know Imperial Pikes when they're doing their you know their walk, you can knock them out. Um, but this keeps you, you safe from cavalry. It's also useful if you're not going to use the the bandage. If you're using the bleed rune, it will knock a whole bunch of people down and bleed them. Um, it can it used to be useful for uh, killing archer units so if you've watched some of my old videos you'll see me use it for that it, it doesn't work like that anymore uh, it simply doesn't do enough damage uh, it, all it is now is a multiple knockdown and it's best used against charging cavalry or charging infantry and it's kind of like a one-off get out of jail free card that you can use once every 45 seconds um, in terms of um, utility you can use it to lock down um, no fleur. Uh, you'll have to see the video later. Uh, you've, you've made me use my train of thought, fleur. Thanks very much for that. <laughs> um, oh, okay. So, charging longsword, uh, yeah, interrupts. Uh, you can use it as an escape as well. That was the thing I wanted to say. If you're getting your ass beat, um, turn around and trigger that skill. Get out of there. It's very useful for that. The other alt, uh, um, I don't like it. Unless you're going to try for a damage base class, um, Sally Forth is slow, it's clunky, it's cumbersome, um, and it does a lot of damage. <laughs> but it's just slow, and you don't have any CC resistance while you're doing it. So even though it will get, get you up and start the, the combat cycle, um, 
you can be interrupted at any time. It's evolved to the point where I would say the skill is not very useful and that almost always you would take the, the Clash of Shields ult. So uh, there's that, I guess. Right. Crusader Counter. Crusader Counter is not a good skill. All right. It does remove days and knockdown, which is really useful for a, a longsword, but it doesn't flow. It either has to be the last skill in your skill cycle, so you'd say, I don't know, clash in um, into with Valor and then um, Crusader Counter. All right. But uh, this is actually, I put these skills around the wrong way from what I would usually use them. Uh, yeah. Yep. So I'm going to play a clip right now. Play. Now watch this. Um, when you do the Crusader counter first, notice how the shield bash... Guys, I'm trying to make a video here. <laughs> notice how the shield bash um, d hits uh, a lot later and there's a delay between the two skills. Um, and then when I show you now uh, how you do it the opposite way around, shield bash into count, uh, Crusader counter, notice that there's no gap between the skills. And that's what makes the skill not very good. All right? That's that gap. Um, it does a little bit of bleed, the damage isn't worth it, to be completely, perfectly honest. Um, with Valor, is a very important skill for Longsword. It's the only real damage skill that the class has. So, what we've got here is a few strikes, and then a knockdown. The knockdown can dismount people, that's, that's helpful as well, but um, you very, very rarely will land the knockdown unless you're playing someone who's um, run it, you know, run their skills dry, they run their stamina dry, or they're inexperienced. But um, the, the slashes is where it's at, and it, it kills a, a infantry pretty well. This is your only infantry or, or unit killing skill. So I, I would take this 100% of the time. Um, this is my standard skill setup, I'll explain why soon. We'll deal with that one last. Martial Prowess. Two nice big wide slashes that hits many enemies. Um, it, it removes days and knockdown, so it's a good recovery. But the most important thing about this is each of the two hits um, will do a 15% armor reduction on the enemy for 6 seconds. So you go slash slash, and now they have a minus 30% armor value for 6 seconds. Now that gets enemy heroes killed. Uh, not by you usually, but certainly by your team. Also, if you pop this on a big, nice enemy unit that's armoured, Madao, Iron Reapers, um, enemy heavy cavalry, it makes them much, much easier to kill for everyone around you. So a nice little combo might be um, clash into a hero, knock them down, quickly into martial prowess to minus 30%, and then start on you with Valor. Um, you won't get to finish the with Valor if the person knows what they're doing, but it will do a ton of damage to them. And say a medium uh, hero like a musket, um, if you knock them down um, at half health, you pop your martial prowess on them and then hit them with valor, you will kill them 100% of the time before they get a chance to get back up again. Shield Bash. Shield Bash is actually a very good skill. I don't use it very often, but it is a very good skill. The little... Um, the little... What do you call this? The little animation that it's showing here... Uh, is wrong. It doesn't work that way anymore. The second hit knocks them to their knees and they, they're they completely downed um, for a couple of seconds and that can be fatal for, for enemies. Um, it also knocks them back a little but it's only the second hit in the shield bash that um, does the, the CC now. Um, you don't get a lot of CC, crowd control, the ability to knock down, stun, uh, knock over your, your, your uh, enemy. It's called CC, crowd control. But it's hard to land because it's only the second uh, hit that will do it. Um, and well, it's not super hard to land, but I, I like it as a skill. And it can be used in combination with others. Uh, usually uh, you could use it as like, um, give them a, a slap with the, the shield bash, right? And then you launch into your with valor to, to cause lots and lots of damage with them. And it doesn't knock them down for very long is the, the biggest problem. So, you know, in terms of rating them, what we're rating them one, two, three, one is a good skill, three is a bad skill. Um, with Valor is one, Crusader Counter is three, it's a bad skill, Clash of Shields is two, um, Sally Forth is two, uh, Martial Prowess is uh, one to two, and Shield Bash is two. Just to give you an idea of um, how good they are. Mercy of Heaven, 
is a tier one skill. It is absolutely mandatory for every type of uh, longsword build that you make. I've heard people talk about it and say, oh, I'd play really well without the mercy. No, you're stupid. You're stupid and you, you deserve to be told you're stupid. If you're not taking the skill, why the hell are you playing longsword? You know, you've got the lowest damage class in the game, even if you build for damage. Why would you not take the skill? It's ridiculous. This skill is amazing. One of the best skills in the entire game, in my humblest of opinions. So, ignore the text. Ignore the text. Let me tell you what it does. So, you, you cast it, and you immediately get 10% of your hit points back. That's lovely. Then you get 9 ticks of 2.67% or 2.7% on you okay ignore the text you immediately get back sorry not not 10 percent back straight away you get the hundred and uh, one thousand one hundred plus six percent that is accurate you get that back straight away and the health tick is you get nine health ticks of 2.7 percent the text is dead wrong okay nine health ticks at 2.7 percent of your base total of health you do get the 1100 plus six percent and that's why uh you know the deep hit point pool still helps you the buff is is correct for the text. Grants piety, increasing your, you personally, defences by 50% for 3 seconds, that is accurate, which um, the effect turns into unswerving. So after the 3 seconds, you in increase your uh, defences by 20%. That's right, it increases your defences by 20% for 5 seconds, and any time you use a skill, it resets that 5 seconds. Let that sink in. Now, if you're, that's very important if you're a damage class, particularly, a damage longsword, if you're a crazy damage longsword. But have a think about that eight, um, 850 bonus, right? So you're going to get 170 bonus. It's going to take you over 1,000 armor class already, okay? So you're deep into that territory of diminishing returns. And this is why you only need about 850, 900. But 850 is that, that tipping point for the armor. And you're almost always going to have this active, Almost always. So that's quite nice. One thing it doesn't say here is that everything in your, your blast area here, your area of effect, um, will get 1% of their health back every second for 9 seconds. Now, when you when you cast Mercy of Heaven, and it is a cast, it is a magical spell, um, it, the, the icon will turn into 90 vowels. That increases the movement of you and nearby allies by 20% for nine seconds that's really fast for a relatively long time especially in combat now remember as well if you remember back you've got your runes anytime that your friends are affected by knightly vows or mercy of heaven they're also going to get that six percent damage reduction on top of it okay important so the other buff is grant spearhead increasing all armor penetration by 30 percent for three seconds. After that three seconds is up, your armor penetration is increased by 15%. And if you hit an enemy with a skill, it resets that five seconds. And don't forget, you can go tap, tap. So you can have Mercy of Heaven and Nightly Vows going at the same time with a 10 second cooldown essentially between the double tap. So you can have that 20% um, armor increase and you can have that 20% um, hip, um, speed increase and you can have that 15% uh, armor penetration increase all at the same time on essentially a 10 second cooldown in practice the skill is amazing it's just fantastic and it's absolutely mandatory for every longsword so that's my explanation about how the mechanics of longsword work I'm not perfect I may have made some mistakes. Feel free to tell everybody in the comments down below. Um, I, I think that's pretty much all I've got to add for for the longsword. Um, I've got dozens and dozens and dozens, over 300 games I've uploaded to YouTube. So feel free to have a look and and, and see for yourself how I'm playing the longsword. Um, but I would definitely recommend if you're new to the class or especially if you're new to the game, go into that armor-based, toughness-based longsword. It's just not efficient and not effective uh, to be a damaged longsword. Oh, well, boys and girls, I hope you learned something new or you've just enjoyed the battle. Thank you so much for coming to my channel.